We got some week two OFL action as the Rams and Panthers each starting off with a pair of nice wins. We'll battle out to see which of these teams can keep their undefeated season going on. Let's go first quarter, second down for the Carolina Panthers, led by reigning OFL MVP Jared Goff. As Goff, with the play-action pass, he would be sacked. No time to throw it, that Solomon Thomas with the play third down and 20. As Goff, you might as well call him Kim Jong-un, because he's launching nukes. And it's Corey Coleman, four catches, 80 yards a week ago. Had another great game here. Third down and one, Jared Goff scrambling like he's late on a date. He would be sacked by Vic Beasley Jr., and that would lead to a Dan the Man Bailey field goal make, and the Carolina Panthers would strike first. As here's the reigning NFC Offensive Player of the Week, Jacoby Brissett, who threw for five touchdowns and no interceptions, as he launches a deep shot for Marvin Jones, who would make the tough catch very next play from scrimmage. First and 15 after a false start penalty as Brissett to Jamison Crowder this time, who would gain 25. Second and goal at the 6, as I think you know where this is going. Brissett to Marvin Jones Jr. For the touchdown, and the Rams would take a 7-3 lead as Carolina has it back. Jared Goff all alone in the backfield. He has no friends. He would connect once again with the former Cleveland Brown, Corey Coleman. For Coleman, now the 15. This would probably be the scariest play of the day as Kareem Hunt with the juke. Hunt was, of course, traded to the Saints. However, due to cap reasons, the trade was voided, and he had a much better game this week than he did in Week 1. He wasn't fantastic, but he played better as first down. Jacoby Brissett. Launching a prayer, our father who art in heaven, as Jamison Crowder would come down with the touchdown reception. What a dart from Jacoby Brissett, who has been playing some excellent football to start off the season after leading the Rams to an OFL appearance last year as Kareem Hunt would be stopped in the backfield. The play was read like a book, and the Rams get the ball back. 56 seconds to go, Jacoby Brissett would be lit up like a Christmas tree. On that play, second down and 22, 52 seconds left to go until halftime as Brissett looking to throw it. He would be stuffed like Thanksgiving turkey by the rookie out of Clemson, Cleland Farrell with his first career sack. One of two sacks on the day for Farrell. Let's now go second half. Carolina has the football as Kareem, the best kicker on this team with a nice run right there. The former Kansas City Chief. Now at the 37-yard line is Jared Goff. He would fumble the football. He loses the juice. The guard couldn't get it, but luckily for Carolina, their offensive lineman was able to make the play as Jacoby Brissett has more time than someone waiting in a Burger King drive through Launching another prayer. It will be intercepted by Drake Kirkpatrick. However, he was out of bounds. Huge break for L.A. and Jacoby Brissett's passer rating. Now let's enter the fourth quarter as Will Fuller, the former Notre Dame Fighting Irish, with a nice play right there. Very next play, Goff over to Corey Coleman for a nice game, but Corey Coleman would be injured. Coleman has been phenomenal so far this season. It would be a hip injury, and luckily for Carolina, he won't miss any games. He will be ready for next week's, week's clash against the Saints. As on second and three, Goff scrambling like eggs on a frying pan, and he'd be sacked by the big boy Linval Joseph which would lead to another Dan Bailey field goal make. He finished 2-for-2 two two on the day. Carolina got the ball back. However, Tyran Matthew, the Honey Badger, with the I-N-T. You can't spell intercepted without the D. And it's not looking good for Carolina. They need a stop here on third down or else this game is over. Play action passes. Brissett would be brought down. That's once again the rookie. Cleland Farrell with a huge play. And the Panthers have life. Let's see if they can capitalize this golf. He would be picked off again, this time Patrick Peterson, who had two picks last week and won NFC Defensive Player of the Week. And the Rams went over San Francisco. That's how this one ends. Also, I forgot to show the Bucks score, but they did beat the Texans. 14-13, Rams win. So there you have it, folks. The Los Angeles Rams ended up getting the win, 14-13. Pretty exciting game. I thought both quarterbacks overall played pretty well. Jared Goff did struggle in the fourth quarter, 
But other than that, he was solid. And Jacoby Brissett had another really good game. Kareem Hunt was much better than he was a week ago against the Falcons. Meanwhile, Duke Johnson didn't do much. In the receiving game, Jamison Crowder made a nice catch. Corey Coleman, luckily for the Panthers, he won't be out. Uh, Marvin Jones had a nice touchdown reception, and outside of that, not much else for the receivers. Blocking-wise, there were a decent amount of sacks given up. Two from Jonah Williams and Marcus Gilbert, one from Brandon Brooks, Ron Leary, Kelvin Beecham, and Patrick Omame. On the defensive side of the football, Quan Alexander led both sides with eight tackles. Sacks, we have two from the rookie Cleland Farrell, as well as one from Solomon Thomas. Draymond Jones, Calais Campbell, Limbaugh Joseph, Vic Beasley, and Robert Quinn. We had two interceptions, one from the Honey Badger, Tyran Matthew, and one from Patrick Peterson. And then fumble forces, we had two from Draymond Jones and Robert, Robert Quinn, neither of which were recovered. Looking at the other games around the league, the Detroit Lions were able to beat the team that I am using, the New Orleans Saints 31-21. Lions and Saints are now both 1-1 one one as Dwayne Haskins with a meh performance, 18-35. of 35. It looks like he got a little bit banged up. Patrick Mahomes was very good, throwing four touchdowns and 300 yards. Running the ball, Melvin Gordon solid. Dalvin Cook, he did run for a touchdown, but left a lot to be desired. In the receiving game, the most yards went to Kendall Wright, who got a touchdown. Receiving leader for New Orleans was Dalvin Cook. Noah Fant with seven receptions. On the blocking end, two sacks allowed from Ryan Ramchek, one from Jason Kelsey, Ben Jones, and James Hurst. And then on the defensive side of the ball, ten tackles from Devin White leading the way. Sacks, two from Michael Bennett, one for Aaron Donald, Quinnen Williams, and Brandon Graham. Interceptions, we had one from Denzel Ward and Kenny Vaccaro. Fumbles, there were no fumbles from... Actually, no, there was one fumble for us. It was Ryan Kerrigan who forced it, and I guess it was recovered by New Orleans. The Redskins won their first game of the year, beating the 49ers 38-28. Brian Lewerke, four touchdowns, no interceptions. Very good game. Deshaun Watson, not too pretty. Ronald Jones, 57 rushing yards, wasn't too impressive. LaShawn McCoy and Miles Gaskin, each with touchdowns. In the receiving game, we had Jeremy Macklin, two catches and two touchdowns for San Francisco. Gerald Everett with a touchdown reception. Julian Edelman with two touchdown catches. And Miles Gaskin also had one. In the blocking game, only one sack allowed combined. That was by Billy Price. And then on defense, Ryan Shazier and Brian Arakpo, each with nine tackles. Sacks, one from Michael Pierce and Harold Landry. And then interceptions, one from Jordan Hicks and Xavier Rhodes. Were there any fumbles? No. New England goes down to 0-2 as they lose to the Cowboys 17-13. Blake Bortles, 341 yards and a touchdown. Not much for Tyree Jackson, two interceptions and only 58% completion. Ezekiel Elliott rushing for a touchdown. Aaron Jones and uh, Josh Jacobs didn't really do anything. In the receiving game, the rookie A.J. Brown with 107 yards. Adam Thielen also with a touchdown. Pierre Garçon also had a touchdown of his own. Blocking two sacks a lot from Josh Klein and Chase Roulier. One from Andre Dillard and Damian Prince on the defensive side of the ball. Ten tackles for Nigel Bradham. Two sacks for Malik Jackson. One and a half for Vontez Perfect. One for Gordon Walker and Tack McKinley. And then half for Adrian Claiborne. Interceptions. One for Nigel Bradham. One for Tashawn Gibson. We did have a fumble for us. That was by Malik Jackson and Jordan Willis. And Willis also has a fumble recovery. The Green Bay Packers improved to 2-0 with a nice win over the Raiders, 35-14. As Baker Mayfield, three touchdowns, no interceptions, very solid. Marcus Mariota, under 50% completion, throwing two picks. Saquon Barkley running for two touchdowns. Alvin Kamara, also of a solid day. As for the Raiders, Corey Clement didn't really do much in the receiving game. Five catches for a buck 36 and a touchdown for Sterling Shepard. Two touchdowns for Hollywood Brown. And then Brandon Cooks was also able to tack on a touchdown. Blocking wise, one sack allowed by Lane Johnson, Steven Wisniewski, Larry Warford, James Daniels, and Juwan Taylor. On defense, 11 tackles from Khalil Hodge. One sack for Hodge, Ioannidis, Jonathan Hankins, Henry Anderson, and Connor Barwin. Half a sack for Kamoko Ture and J.J. Watt. 
interceptions, one for Marcus Peters, one for Kareem Jackson. And then fumble forces, one for Marcus Peters, and I guess Oakland recovered it. The Giants start off 0-2 after a clobbering loss to the Eagles. I know, I will put in Sam Darnold. I will show at the end of the video that Darnold is the starter. But Sam Bradford actually didn't play that bad. It's just that he got sacked seven times and four touchdown passes for Kirk Cousins. Running the ball, David Johnson over, or not over 100 yards, but exactly 100. Derrick Henry, only 2.1 yards a carry. In the receiving game, David Johnson, two receiving touchdowns. Robbie Anderson with one. Also receiving touchdowns for Eric Decker, TJ Jones, and Rashard Matthews. In the blocking game, three sacks allowed by Alec Everly, two for Rick Wagner, one for Jake Matthews, Anthony Costanzo, and Ryan Schrader. We had nine tackles from Thomas Davis, sacks, three and a half for the big defensive tackle, Sheldon Richardson, one and a half for Demarcus Lawrence, one for Jaquiski Pop-Tart, Ed Oliver, and William Golston, half a sack for Steven Nelson and Jeffrey Simmons, one interception, that was by P.J. Williams, and were there any fumble forces? None. The Falcons were able to get on the win column by beating Tennessee 28-10 as Carson Wentz had a much better day after his very bad opening game start. Only 158 yards and only 50% completion, so he was far from great, but he did throw three touchdowns in that game before Josh Rosen. Devontae Freeman, 113 rushing yards in the receiving game. Touchdowns from Emmanuel Sanders, Gavin Escobar, two for Julio Jones. And in the blocking, sacks were allowed by Brian Bulaga and Max Unger. Nine tackles for Deion Jones leading the way. Sacks for Nick Kwiatkowski, Snacks Harrison, Khalil Mack, Deion Jones, and Fabian Morrow each had half a sack. Interceptions. We had one from Fabian Morrow, one from Levante David. And then there were one fumble force, which was by Frank Clark. And Clark also recovered it. The Indianapolis Colts lost their first game of the year, losing by two scores to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Mitch Trubisky only one touchdown. Derek Carr also with one touchdown. In the run game, Jay Ajayi, 23 for a buck, six and a score. Todd Gurley only 52 yards. Receiving, Theo Riddick led the way with 68 yards. Touchdowns were caught by Travis Benjamin and Kenny Stills. Blocking-wise, we had sacks. Two sacks allowed from Alex Bars and Caleb McGarry. One sack allowed by Orlando Brown, Justin Britt, and Joe Tooney. And then on defense, ten tackles for Dylan Cole and Denzel Perryman. Sacks, one and a half for Von Miller, one for Perryman, one for Sheldon Rankins, one for Eric Armstead and Desmond Bryant. Half a sack for Dylan Cole and Cravon LeBlanc. There were no interceptions, and there were no fumble forces. And last but certainly not least, the Arizona Cardinals fall to 0-2 after losing 14-7 to the Cleveland Browns. Drew Locke, 170 yards, one touchdown, solid game from Lamar Jackson. Running the ball-wise, Christian McCaffrey was very good. Cardinals couldn't do much as Leonard Fournette, only 35 yards. Receiving-wise, Martavis Bryant, where's the weed, 68 yards. Touchdowns were caught by A.J. Green, Michael Crabapple, and Evan Ingram. Blocking, this was why the Cardinals lost last week, and it looks like it was a little bit better, but still two sacks allowed from Frank Ragnow, one from Andrews Pete, and one for Hijalte Froholt. Hope I said that right. Ten tackles for Minka Fitzmagic, a sack for Mac Wilson, Deron Payne, Sheldon Day, half a sack for Jamar Taylor, and Taven Bryan. Interception, only one. That was by, of course, the man, the myth, the legend, Minka it's magic and there were no fumble forces so that'll do it for week two of the octagonal football league as we had multiple user teams take some wins and some losses we're also going to look at the standings as you can see the nfc south is quite close let's start with the afc north steelers and browns each two and oh ravens and bengals one and one in the south texans jaguars and colts all with one win titans Yet to get on the win column. In the AFC East, the Jets are 2-0. Everybody else is 0-2. In the West, Kansas City 2-0. Broncos 0-1. Raiders and Chargers winless. In the NFC North, the Packers and the Vikings are each 2-0. Lions and Bears at 1-1. In the NFC South, everybody is 1-1 so far. However, the Saints have the tiebreaker over the Bucks so far. And the Panthers have a tiebreaker over Atlanta. 
And the NFC East, Dallas is 2-0, Eagles, Redskins 1-1, one one, Giants 0-2. And, and in the West, the Rams and the Seahawks are 2-0, Cardinals and Niners are 0-2. And there we go, Sam Darnold is the starter, so that's going to end the video. If you are not already in the league and you think that this would be something that would interest you, make sure to join the Discord. I will leave the link to the server in the description, and as always, have a good one. Hey, hey.